Hi, I'm Dr. Masha Livitz, an endocrine surgeon at UCLA Health. If you're watching this video, chances are you're getting ready for or healing from a parathyroidectomy. That's surgery to remove one or more of the parathyroid glands. First of all, well done on taking this step. Whether you've been dealing with high calcium, kidney stones, bone loss, or just not feeling well, parathyroid surgery can really help. Today, I wanna to share a few tips on what to expect during recovery and how to manage common symptoms, especially when it comes to calcium levels, which play a big role in how you feel after surgery. Let's start with what happens right after surgery. At UCLA Health, we perform the surgery with a precise technique and most patients go home the same day. During the procedure, we use a numbing injection in the side of your neck, which is called a superficial cervical plexus block. This helps lessen pain after surgery and makes your recovery more comfortable. This block may cause temporary numbness or tingling in the neck, ears, or shoulder area, and that's normal. But there's another kind of numbness or tingling that is also to watch out for after parathyroid surgery, and that is due to low calcium, which is called hypocalcemia. When we remove the overactive parathyroid gland, your body needs time to adjust. Sometimes the remaining parathyroid glands take a little while to wake up and start working again. That's why we give calcium and vitamin D supplements after surgery to help the transition and to help avoid symptoms of low calcium. So what does hypocalcemia or low calcium feel like? Common symptoms include tingling or numbness around the lips, tingling in the fingertips or the toes, muscle cramps or twitching, and in more severe cases, feelings of anxiety or restlessness. If you experience these symptoms in the days after surgery, it's probably a sign that your body needs more calcium. And it's safe and appropriate to take extra calcium if you need it. If you start feeling tingling or cramping, take an extra dose of about 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of calcium right away. It usually helps within 30 to 60 minutes. You can repeat the dose as needed if symptoms persist. Of course, if your symptoms don't improve, you should call your surgeon or endocrinologist for further instructions. Other things to look out for during your recovery are soreness inside the throat and swelling at the incision. Icing your neck in the first couple of days after surgery can help to lessen swelling. Soft foods like soups and smoothies can be comforting in the first day or two if your throat is very sore. I also want to mention that everyone's recovery looks a little different. Some people feel better within a day or two after surgery and even have more energy or other quality of life benefits. Other patients may feel more tired for the first few weeks after surgery as their body readjusts. If you have had high calcium for a long time, your body may need more time to reset. So to summarize, most patients can go home the same day of the surgery. At UCLA Health, we use a numbing block that can cause temporary numbness in the neck and face, which is normal and expected. We routinely prescribe calcium and vitamin D after surgery. Numbness or tingling around the mouth and fingertips could be signs of low calcium, and it's okay to take extra calcium as needed. Always feel free to ask your surgeon any questions that you have during your recovery. I'm Masha Livitz, endocrine surgeon at UCLA Health. Thanks for watching these recovery tips after parathyroidectomy.